and I will be participating in Caribbean Heritage Month by reading all things Caribbean. Hi YouTube, it's Kia of Kia Comments and I'm back with another video. As some of you may or may not know, June kicks off Caribbean Heritage Month and I was born and raised in the Caribbean, the Bahamas to be specific, and I will be participating in Caribbean Heritage Month by reading all things Caribbean. I am participating in the hashtag Caribbean Reads over on Instagram, as well as the hashtag Caribbean, which was created by Karen over at Run Right Reads and Peter over at Comfy Cozy Up. If you want information about it, I will leave the link in the description box below. And as part of the participation, I have decided in my videos for the month, I will focus on works from my country and other countries where the fiction writers may not be as well known. So without further ado, let's get into it. God's Angry Babies by Ian Strawn follows protagonist Tree Bodhi. This is a coming of age novel where readers follow Tree in the midst of his adventures and misadventures. The thing that I love most about this is the world building. So Ian Strawn creates fictional areas in the Bahamas where Tree Bodhi grows up. Within that world, we get to see the internal politics that's happening in the Bahamas at that time. We get to see Tree's relationships with his family, specifically his mother and his brothers. We get to see the island in a way that it isn't necessarily always taught about. The other thing that Ian Strong really does well is create that tension, the push and pull of what it means to grow up on an island that is paradise, but can also be a sand trap. And he does this in symbolic ways. Tree lives in an area where everybody doesn't have very much money, but on the island is this spectacular hotel where the idea of money and what money can offer is perpetuated. We see Tree time and time again, learn what it means to appreciate what's real and differentiate that from fool's gold. This is the novel that I would highly recommend if you're interested in knowing more about the Bahamas. It's a novel that I would recommend if you're interested in the politics of the Bahamas. It's a novel that I would recommend if you are interested in coming of age reads. If I Had the Wings by Greek Bahamian Helen Clonaris is a collection of short stories where we follow multiple protagonists and multiple individuals. My favorite story in the collection was definitely the story Cowboy, where we follow a young white girl who creates a relationship with her older Haitian gardener. And the relationship is interesting because the power is held with the young white girl. Planaris really manages to stuff a lot of themes in her stories. She deals with huge issues, racial issues, class issues, gender issues, LGBTQA issues. She has it all. One of the other things that I really appreciate about this novel is how Helen Clanaris manages what I like to think of as the magical real. It's very much put in her stories in a deadpan way. And I think that that's because ideas of the magical real in the Bahamas, in the culture, is very much accepted. No one raises an eyebrow when discussions of Obea come up. These are just things that are par for the course in my country and in a lot of other Caribbean countries. And I think that the way that they roll off the tongue of the protagonists in Helen Clonaris' stories are done very well. So if you are a fan of magical realism, if you are interested in power dynamics, if you are interested in seeing the way that relationships between children and adults play out in a collection of short stories, this is something to pick up. The Green Shutters by S.L. Shepard follows protagonist Annabelle Lee. This is a multi-generational novel where the reader discovers that Annabelle Lee has been taken away by her mother who ran away from an abusive relationship with her husband and also who has this love affair with another man. And we see all of this play out under the shroud of the house that Annabelle Lee is almost hidden in. So readers see the life of the mother and the life of the daughter and the ways in which the social constructs of the island hem them in and keep them from being happy. This novel is near and dear to my heart because it was the first novel that I read by a Bahamian. And I mean, it just made all the difference to me. It, I really saw myself in the novel. I knew the places that were mentioned, even if they were alluded to. It was a fantastic read for me. And I would recommend this to anybody who likes historical fiction, anybody who likes family dramas, anybody who likes strong female voices, and anybody who's interested in family dynamics. This one is a good read. 
And the final book is one that I am currently listening to, and that is by Janice Lynn Mather. It's called Learning to Breathe. I will leave uh, an image up here, uh, up here, so that you can see it. I am not all the way through this, but I am thoroughly enjoying the story of Indira Ferguson, who is from one of the family islands and who has been sent to Nassau, which is the main island in the Bahamas, to live with relatives. Indira learns a lot of things and grows up really quickly in the home of relatives who do not treat her as carefully as one should treat family. And she is starting to learn that family is something outside of blood relations. I'm really enjoying the dynamics of the relationships between high schoolers in the Bahamas. It takes me back. I'm really enjoying hearing the accent. I'm glad that I decided to listen to this on audio. I'm really enjoying the coming of age story that I think has impacted so many girls in my country and that has resonated with me. So if you are interested in coming of age stories, gender dynamics, self-discovery, this is a book that I would highly recommend. I know I'm not finished it, but I'm telling you, it's good. Also, as an addition, Janice Lynn Mather is coming out with her second novel, Facing the Sun in August of 2020. So if you decide to listen to this novel or to read this novel and you like this novel, then definitely check out her sophomore production. So that's it. That's all for Books of Fiction by Writers from the Bahamas. Next time I will be investigating fiction writing from another island that's not so well recognized. Until then, please participate in hashtag Caribbean or hashtag Caribbean Reads. Keep reading. Keep writing, keep reviewing. Bye now.